like coming out to your car in the morning and finding two pieces of shit right on your roof. So we're gonna clean that off. Well, the bird crap cleaning got us distracted. The car is pretty much warmed up now to drive, normally at least. Uh, I usually let it warm up until the idle drops below a thousand, so we're pretty much good right now. Trans is still really freaking cold. 37 degrees out. And this is not accurate either. So I got this new mic, uh, DJI mic or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's pretty good. I tested out in the wind yesterday and or a few days ago, and it was actually really good, surprisingly. So up oh, there's Amazon. Probably not getting any packages today, but Amazon does not deliver car parts because we don't have an Amazon build. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over how I like the S650 over the S550. Which one's better? I've had the S550 for about two years, and I have had the S650 for about six months, 5,200 miles. I'm gonna be telling you guys which one I think is better and if it's worth to even get the S650. I'm gonna be putting the GoPro up on the visor right here and we're gonna be getting some POV drives. So if there's a difference in mic quality or video quality, it's because I'm using the GoPro. Alrighty, so the question everyone is wondering, should you get an S650 over the S550? Or if you have an S550, should you upgrade to the S650? So we're gonna start off with the suspension and the steering. Um, People have said the steering is slightly better on the new generation Mustang over the S550. Are you going to notice it? Not really. You're really not going to. It's not like you're going to hop into this car and be like, oh my god, I'm in a GT3 RS. The suspension's more finely tuned and the steering's 300% tighter, whatever the board set claimed they, it was. Every lowering spring from the S550 can go right onto the S650. It's the same nuts and bolts, same struts, same springs from the S550. Everyone's going with the Steeda Progressive Sports. Uh, that's what I went because they were the first to label that it fit the S650 even though every spring literally transfers over to the S650. I know there's some different like linkages in the back. I'm not really sure what, so I'm not really going to speak on it, but I know there is some slightly different tweaks in the rear. Now, one of the main reasons I did get the S650 is because the interior is just totally different. As, I mean, as you can see, I mean, you get the one big digital cluster here. I mean, there's no part right here, which is kind of stupid. I don't, I really don't understand because if you get a base model S650, it's split right here. And it's literally the two, the two of the screens are literally the same size, which there's literally nothing here. So I don't understand if this was one big display. Okay. I understand the upgrade, but there's literally nothing here and if you get a base model S650 this is literally just cut out and you're not it's not like you're missing anything but the only reason why I did get a 401A premium on the S650 because I had a 301A on the S550 and it had the like the base it doesn't have the calculator screen it still had the like 8 inch touch screen definitely wanted the heated the cooled seats the leather seats the automated cruise control on my other car, I didn't have all that. I actually drove to Florida in my, not in my S550, but I drove to Florida and picked up leather, heated and cooled seats and swapped them out. And I bought the bezel and added that to the car. So I had the functionality. I mean, it worked and they worked pretty well, but I wanted all that. I didn't have to want to go through all that. I wanted to get what I wanted and not have to add stuff to the interior because I love the interior of this car. I'm not going to be adding no carbon fiber crap. I think it looks perfect. There's really nothing you even need to upgrade. You get the automated cruise control, the automatic stopping and braking. It steers too for you, which is really nice. I got the red guts. You get the leather trim around here and the center console and the red stitching here and over here as well, which is a really nice touch. I really do like the red stitching. It goes well with the red seats. And you get the my color and all that type of stuff. And you get the GPS system or whatever, but who uses the GPS when you just, everyone uses Apple CarPlay nowadays, so it's kind of pointless to use the stock infotainment system because everyone just uses Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I'm also going to touch base on the rattles in this car. I'm getting some stupid rattles, like I don't even know where they're coming out from. I mean, there's something over here in the passenger side that's rattling. Probably here in the video, it sounds like crap. It's actually loud now that I think about it because I usually have music on so I don't hear it, but... Also with the 401A package, you get the heated steering wheel, which is really nice. I use it literally every day. You know, it's been winter so far, 36 degrees out, sun's gone. I really do like the 401A package. I do think it's worth it. You 
also get the 12 speaker B&O system, which I think is pretty good. It's good enough for me at least. I know some people have said it's not that good to them, but to the average person, it's I think it's pretty good. That's also what I didn't have in the S550. What I didn't have on the S550, I have on this car. I have the active exhaust now. So I'm gonna put it in track mode right here and we're gonna do a little rip ski after this turn here. When you're on the gas in this 10 speed, it really puts in work. It really shines. It's, the shifts are so quick and everything just perfect. But in traffic, I'm going to put it in normal so you guys can hear me a little better. But in traffic, stop and go, it's, it's mid. And plus in the cold, it, right when you like start up, it's, there's always like, it acts kind of funny when the trans is cold. But when it's warm and you're on the gas, it's shifts are just on stop perfect so crisp and that was just in normal mode usually in sport mode they're even more crisp it's crazy like it's addicting the sound like you drop a gear that's like it's just i don't know it's a different type of thing here with the shades on since i guess it wants to be sunny out now now a big concern that everyone's been having oh my god is the s650 a dud Oh my god, they're only putting out 380 wheel, 390 wheel, 400 wheel. The S650 comes with 480 horsepower. If you get the active exhaust, it comes with 486, whatever. So 480 horsepower. They lack power off the showroom floor. I mean, they have carbon filters in there in the two dual intakes, which I think is actually looks so much cleaner in the engine bay. I like the engine bay and the S650 way more than the S550 because the dual throttle bodies really make it it really looks so aggressive but it comes with the carbon filters which i haven't even taken out yet i've seen some people get like a six horsepower gain or no horse horsepower gain i mean you're not even gonna really feel that if i'm being honest and then it has the big resonator i did do a x pipe so i did do a resonator delete the car is just so restricted from factory you got to remove all that crap i mean i was bone stock stock suspension still had the suitcase resonator in and i still do have the carbon traps and I raced a GT350 and he's my friend and he knows how to drive I mean he wasn't slowing down on the shifts and those things rev up to 8250 which is actually insane we were neck and neck I think he was starting to pull on me a little higher end but that was with zero mods resonator delete does do a little bit because it weighs a little less and plus it gives the exhaust more free flowing so I mean I'm talking about like three horsepower here I'm not saying it's night and day difference but we were neck on neck. I mean, these things are not duds. I'm gonna be honest, they're not duds. I've raced as 550s and I've won three times out of the three times. These things are not duds, guys. I mean, people are like, oh my God, they're pushing out 390 wheel. Dude, if you've got a 10 speed in this thing, these things pull like trains. They're not a dud. It, the horsepower bump is a little bit more than the S550. I'm really getting confused saying S550, S650 and then back and forth, but I heard the MT82 is slightly tweaked. I don't know really about that because I got the 10 speed, so I didn't really look into it, but the 10 speed on this car is also phenomenally better. So much better, so much more smooth. Just, I literally had, I don't think the car has jerked at all, like when braking at all. I know 10 speeds on the last generation Mustang, they were like, you went to brake at the stoplight and you're just, you got thrown back, it jerks a lot and it's just sloppy and it's just, just not it and the s650 totally difference night and day difference smooth you don't even feel the shifts and i did a test drive in the car with whatever it had seven miles it still feels the same even though i'm sure this is an adaptive learning trans it still feels the same the shifts are still crisp they're still smooth the downshifts are nice they're smooth and not jerky and i have 5200 miles in the car now so had no issues with it i think this is way better trans than the s550 it's tuned differently or whatever they did to it but i think it's phenomenally better than the s550 in my opinion something whatever they did to it they did a good job but i am a huge fan of the digital gauge cluster crap because you can change the themes on everything your sport mode hopefully i don't even know if you guys can see it but 
you can change the cluster theme, you can change the color, the dash, I mean, you can do that in the S552, but I think it's just so much better. I mean, you get the little Mustang right here, you change your exhaust notes on the screen, all your gauges are on the screen and track apps and all that type of stuff. I think it's a lot better. The only thing that's a downside is, I don't know, there's a cop, but the only downside is I think, I wish they had some AC controls right here other than max defrost right here. I wish they just had like a up and down to increase or decrease the air, airflow coming out of the vents. That's the only thing because it does lag a little, it is a little laggy, but it is super responsive once it's booted up and everything's working. And plus they do over the air updates on these things. So that is a plus. So I'm sure all the issues that I'm having, which is not many, Sometimes the screen's laggy, or if I'm like adjusting the air and I'm playing music, it glitches out a little bit and it crackles the audio, which is kind of annoying, but I'm sure that will all be fixed with over the air updates and whatnot. The big thing I really hope they do is on the digital cluster on the S550, which I miss on this car, is there's no, you got, I don't know if you guys can see the screen, but there's no gear display if you have a 10 speed which is actually kind of annoying. I wish they added that to it, which they should have because there's literally a blank spot right here, which doesn't make any sense. So hopefully they add that over the air update. I think that would be pretty cool. We are in Morris, Illinois right now where Gail Lewis has retired from the Walmart. Here it is, guys. Let me see if I can change the angle of the camera. There it is right here. Gail Lewis, where she stepped foot in and last day about a month ago, Gail Lewis, what a worker, man. So to answer your guys' question, S550 or S650, it's honestly personal preference. I mean, you're still getting a reliable Gen 4 Coyote. I mean, you get the dual throttle bodies. Does that really help? No idea. I mean, it's probably not doing much at all. Hold on, let me pass this dude real quick. I do like the S650 more, in my opinion. I mean, I didn't mod the S550, like, performance-wise at all. But I do like the S650 more, personally. I've just had more fun driving it. I love the infotainment system. I love the 401A package. And if you're coming from, like, a S550 base model, go get a S650 Premium or something. Because I love the Premium. I love all the options. I love the heated, the cooled seats, the steering wheel, heated steer wheel and everything if you're just coming into getting a mustang or you're thinking about it and you want to go like boost i mean you could still boost this car you can get a whipple or a pro charger because i know they do have access to tune this car because it is locked i'd say get like a base model s650 and boost it but then you're you're paying like for a base model like high 40s already which is kind of obnoxious and you can get slightly used s550 for like mid 30s low 30s and you can throw a boost at it and by the time you boost it and upgrade all those other parts you're paying pretty much what an s650 price is you know what i'm saying so it honestly depends what your situation is personally that's what i think so i'm gonna be trying to post more videos i know i said that last time but i'm seriously gonna try posting more videos i just bought this mic i didn't spend money on the mic for no reason hope you guys like this video i'll get more content on the way Peace out.